All right, it is the top of the hour, so it's time to get going. My name's Mike Panaki. I'm going to be your presenter today. And I'd like to welcome you to our presentation on twisted pair certification methods. Uh, I guess one of the first things that I need to know is that you can see and hear me okay. So in the chat window there, if you just want to throw something in saying, Mike, I can see and hear you, then that way I know that uh, I'm getting to you okay. Now, just a couple things before we get started, because, well, these always come up. And that is that I don't have any control over your audio. So if for some reason you're seeing me right now and my lips are moving, but you can't hear me, then um, I can't do anything about that because I'm getting a lot of messages saying, Mike, I can see and hear you. So with that, I'm going to do my best to make sure we have enough bandwidth here so that you can see and hear me okay through the presentation. Uh, the other thing is, I know somebody's going to ask before I get a chance to even say it, yes, this is being recorded. So what will happen is a email will go out tomorrow at about 24 hours from now. That's when Zoom automatically will send it out. And that email will have a link to the recorded version of this presentation. So if you want to go back and watch this again because you just didn't get enough of me today, then you can go back and watch that as many times as you want. Share it with your friends and family, whatever you want to do. So with that, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So part of it might be you're asking, who is this guy and why is he talking about twisted pair certification methods? Well, you may have noticed the logo that was up before the presentation, and that's the Fluke Network Certified uh, test, Cable Test Technician Program. And so my company, Network Protocol Specialists, has been delivering that training in the United States for the last 10 years. So what we do is we offer a training class right now online every month to teach people how to use the Fluke Network certification equipment to go in and certify copper and fiber cabling. And so that it is a recognized program. In fact, you'll find that a lot of contracts may require that if you're going to use the Fluke Network's equipment to certify the cabling, you need to be certified on the equipment. And the idea there is that it just helps you learn how to use the equipment better and the technologies that go behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with just a couple of slides that I'm going to go through some of these different methods. And then, because I'm a hands-on person, we're going to come over here and we are going to go over, well, not that one. You know, there we go. Switcher's kind of acting funny. But we're going to do some hands-on. Uh, as you may notice, there's cable behind me. We're going to be testing some of this cable. We're going to test some patch cords. We're going to take a look at these different methods, when we use them, when we don't use them, and what's important with each one. So let's go ahead and I promise you just a couple of slides. I really wouldn't want to make you sit through a presentation where all I did was grind through slides there. But let's just come over here. We'll pop this up real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the different uh, twisted uh, pair methods. And we're going to look at, you know, the different test limits. So today we're going to be talking about permanent link, channel, modular plug terminated link, and patch cord testing. Now, if you have any questions, there is a Q&A window. Please don't hesitate to use that. I will be checking that from time to time. And certainly at the end of this presentation, I'll go through those and I'll do my best to get answers to those. And we'll go from there. So let's take a look at each one of these. What do we mean by each one of these different types of links? Well, we have our interconnect channel right here. Now, if you're an installer and you're installing cabling systems, you are typically not going to test this type of link. If I own the cabling system, I'm a network administrator, I want to make sure everything's going to work okay, then I may test this type of link. And what this is, is this is where we use our channel adapter. So we're going to talk about each one of our adapters here. But these adapters go on the tester and we use different adapters depending on what it is that we're testing. So in this case, I would use my channel adapter to connect that to my patch cord. My patch cord then goes to my patch panel. 
I've got my infrastructure cabling that runs through here. I've got my wall jack and I've got a patch cord at the other end. Now, when we're doing a channel test, the patch cords are included as part of the test. What this means is that you can't move those patch cords after you run this test because they were included in the test. If you take and leave those patch cords attached to your tester and you unplug it from that patch panel and you go to the next jack, that's wrong. And I hate to be neg I hate to take the negative. That's not the best way to do it, but let's say it's wrong. And what it did was it just invalidated the previous test you ran. Why? Because you moved the patch cord. So if I'm doing a test where I want to include the patch cords as part of the test, I want to show that those patch cords are good, then I'm going to do that. Now, you'll notice that on here, well, a couple of things. One is our distance limitation on here is 328 feet or 100 meters because that includes the patch cords. This is all the cabling that we would have between the two end devices. Here we see excluded from measurement. So when we use the channel adapter, we do not include the near end crosstalk of this connector in the test. Now, if that near end crosstalk really is bad, it's horrible, we're gonna get an error message that pops up that says, hey, you got a bad patch cord or your next is too high right here. But that near end crosstalk for that jack right there is not included as part of our test. Okay. So this was a case, again, if you're an enterprise owner, you're testing it, you want to make sure everything's good from end to end, or you're going to test all the patch cords that are going to stay at those locations, that is where a channel test comes in. A permanent link test. Now we're going to see that for a permanent link test, we use our permanent link adapters. These are these big heavy cables with replaceable tips at the end. We'll talk about that. This is where we can measure the jack. So what, we've, what happens is when I use my permanent link adapter on my tester, it is measuring the, it's measuring the near end crosstalk, it's taking the measurement of that jack in the patch panel and of that jack in the wall plate. So now we are able to get a measurement from end to end of what is known as the permanent link. That's what's staying in the wall. That's what's attached to the patch panel. Now, what you'll see is that our maximum distance there is 90 meters or 295 feet. This is to account for the patch cords that we're gonna add later on. So if I'm installing a cabling system, this is the type of test I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna test my work or the work of the people that put it in and make sure that they connected that up properly. Now, as we run these tests, I will bring the tester up and I'll show you what the test results look like. So we're, as soon as I go through these just a couple slides, we're gonna go in and set some of these tests up and take a look at what those tests look like, okay? Now, ooh, we have our modular plug terminated link. That sounds pretty cool. This is something we're seeing occur more and more often. And this is where I may have something like a uh, CCTT camera. I've got a wireless access point. I've got some other device that I want to connect up to my network. And I don't want to put a biscuit up there in the ceiling with a patch cord. Uh, what I want to do is just put an RJ45 plug out there on the end of the cable. So that way I can take that plug and plug it right into the device. No patch cord needed. Now in this case, what we need to do is we need to come in and take a measurement that will include the jack on this patch, patch panel right here and this plug. And that's where we're gonna talk about using our patch cord adapter. Now, there is a test that we can run on the tester that includes the, the channel adapter. However, that does not test that plug at the far end. So today, we're gonna focus on how we do this test right here because this tests all of the components that we've put in here. It tests the patch panel, the cable, and that RJ45 plug at the end. But what it does require is that we've got a patch cord adapter. We'll talk about the patch cord adapters 
a little bit more when we get to those. So our distance limitation here is 295 feet because we're not testing the patch cord that goes at this end. Then the last one we're going to look at is testing and certifying patch cords. Now, if we look at channel adapters, I mentioned before with our channel adapters, we do not include the RJ45 plug right here in the measurement. So what happens is for patch cords, we need to include those because otherwise all we're testing is the cable. And if all we're testing is the cable, it's not a valid test because when you look at a patch cord, those RJ45 plugs are a pretty big part of the patch cord. And in fact, that's the piece we put on. That's the piece we really need to test. So we're only measuring the cable. So in this case, what we do is if we came out and looked at our standards, we'd see that it defines how we're supposed to test that. And that is where we're going to go in. We're going to take a look at our patch cord adapters. How are those different than the channel adapters? Why do we use them? And what does the test look like? Okay. So the thing that we find out, you know, it uses a special laboratory tested RJ45 jack. The patch cord limits are going to be tighter than the channel limits. The channel limits could include a lot more connections in the middle and a lot more cable. So in this case, we're going to take a look at those. So really, that's all we're going to look at right there when it comes to the slide. So let me uh, get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to set up and start doing some testing. So let's run each one of these different tests and take a look at the results we get. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to come in and we're going to share my Versive. So one of the neat things that we can do is we can come in and here is our Fluke Networks Versive right here. So this is the tester I'm going to be using to do the testing. And what I've done is I've got the screen shared up there so that you can see it. So as I go through and I run my tests, you can see what I'm doing. Now, before we do anything else, what I need to do is I need to set reference on here. So here I've got my remote unit. Now, when you go out and do your testing, it is critical that you always bring at least one of your channel adapters. Not that we're going to use that for doing our, all of our testing, but what we're going to find out is that our channel adapter is critical for setting reference. So let me grab one of my permanent link adapters here. So I'm going to take and connect my permanent link adapter up to my main unit. Then I'm going to take my channel adapter right here. I'm going to connect that to my remote and I'm going to plug in those two units. So now I've connected the main and the remote together using the permanent link adapter and the channel adapter. And what I do is I'm going to come out here to tools. And I'm going to say set reference. And what that will do is it tells me, hey, you need to connect the main to the remote using that channel adapter and the permanent link adapter. What this does is this synchronizes the main and the remote together. Now, once those are synchronized, we can run a test. One of the things that we hate to run into is if we get out in the field and we go to run a test and it says, you need to set reference. And you go, uh oh, I forgot to bring my channel adapters with me. Don't fall into that case. Make sure you always have those channel adapters in the bag with you because you're going to need those to set reference. So now I say done. So what it's done is it's synchronized those two devices together. And what's really neat is with these, I can synchronize one main unit to up to eight remotes. So now I can carry, I could have a number of people, eight, out in the field with remotes all out there at the far end and I could be running my tests from the wiring closet. Okay? So now we've set reference. Now it's time that we decide what test we're going to run. So if I come in here and I go ahead and select this default test right here, it says this is a TIA CAT6A permanent link 
test. So we're going to go ahead and edit that test. We're going to change it a little bit. So I can select which module I'm using. Now there's a couple of different modules that we have that we can use for testing. We have the DSX 5000, the DSX 8000. The 8000 will do up to CAT 8 testing. So we're using the 5000 today in here. So I need to select my cable type. Now when I select my cable type, and this is going to be true for whichever test we're running, whether it is a permanent link test, a channel test, an MPTL test, or a patch cord test. I need to tell it what kind of cable I'm running. So to, for this one, I'm going to start out, I'm going to do CAT6 UUTP. So I select my cable. Now, when I select my cable type, what it does is it sets my nominal velocity of propagation. That's fun to say. And the nominal velocity of propagation determines how fast the electrons travel through that copper wire. This is going to be used to measure the length of the cable. And if that is not right, our length isn't going to be right. So anytime we're going in and doing this certification, we need to make sure that that NVP matches. So what do I do? I go look at what the vendor tells me it's going to be. And if they don't know, or they know, but if I can't get that from them, what I do is I can come in here and do a measure. And if I know how long the cable is, so it needs to be over 100 feet, if I know roughly how long that cable is, or better yet, exactly how long that cable is, it will calculate my nominal velocity of propagation for me. That will give me an accurate measurement of how long that cable is. So we're going to come back. Now I set my test limit. Just because I set this to CAT6A does not mean that it's doing a CAT6A test. I'm sim I've simply told it what type of cable I'm testing. So in this case, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select my test limit. Now this gives me a number of test limits that I've recently used. I could come in and say more, and I could choose a variety of different test limits. I could say, I want to test this to make sure it's going to run 10 base T with PoE. Okay, but in, for today, I'm going to go to TIA, we're going to go to SCAT6, we're going to do a CAT6 permanent link test. Now, the little plus all plus POE at the end, those add additional tests. So for example, plus POE adds tests for resistance and imbalance of resistance between pairs and within pairs. This is going to give us an idea if we're going to run into any issues as we start drawing current across the cable. Plus all adds some tests like the transverse conversion loss that helps us determine how susceptible is this cabling going to be to noise. So today, um, we're just going to go ahead and do a CAT6 test. Now, the rest of this, storing plot data, we always do that. Anybody that looks at the reports on here is going to want to see the graphs. Our HDTDR TDX, we're going to see, we're going to use these later for troubleshooting problems. So we want those to be kicked in whenever we fail or have a marginal pass. Our outlet configuration. Now in this case, this doesn't really matter for the test. This is for documentation purposes. We're going to leave that at 568B. I'll say use selected. We're going to always leave AC wire map off. If you want to know why that would ever be turned on, come to the class. I'll go through it and talk all about it. And I'm going to hit save. So now we have set up a permanent link test for CAT6. So what I'm going to do is let's switch over here. I'm going to grab a CAT6 cable. Okay, so here, here there we've got some CAT6 cable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my channel adapter off here. I'm going to plug that into one end of my CAT6 cable. And I'm going to plug my other permanent link adapter in. And I'm going to plug that into the other end. And we get this chirp. And what that chirp tells me is that chirp lets me know that my testers are connected. So if you're doing the testing and you're in the, in the wiring closet and you hear that chirp, you know that the person at the far end has connected the remote. And now you can press test and go in there and start running your test. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've 
Got that, I'll say use selected right there. And for our cable IDs, we could put in all kinds of cable ID screens or IDs in here, sequences. For today, we're not gonna really get into that. So I'm gonna hit test. We're gonna go ahead and run our test on our cable. First thing it does is a wire map. Wire map's no good, test fails immediately. I love to hear that tone. That means pass. So what's happened is, we have now tested the RJ45 jacks on each end and the cable in between. We've compared that to the test limit that we've selected and we get a pass or fail. Now in this case, it shows me my wire map right here. So it shows me all my pairs are good. The colors on this wire map are determined by which of the uh, outlet configurations we selected. And when I come into performance, now it tells me for this link, how long was it? based on that nominal velocity of propagation. So it shows me what my length limit is. And we only look at the shortest pair. And one thing, why do we see a difference in pair length? Well, it's because there's a different twist in the wire. So those, the tighter the twist, the more physical wire there is between one end and the other. So it says we could go out to 295, we're at 46. Hey, that's great. Shows, now resistance has an I, this tells me that this was not included in the test, but it gives us the value. And one case that I've run into where resistance is all out of whack is if I have copper cladded aluminum wire. That's bad. So now it gives me my insertion loss, return loss, near end crosstalk, power sum, uh, near end crosstalk. It gives me my test results. I see that I passed. I can come in and hit save. I can say, you know, cable ID. We'll save it to cable ID one, I'll say save. So we just ran a test where we did our permanent link. And so again, with our permanent link, we used our permanent link adapters to test the jack here and to test the jack there. So if I'm going from patch panel to patch panel or I'm going to patch panel to wall jack, this is the type of test I wanna run. Now, let's say that I want to come in. We're going to pull out this permanent link adapter. Let's grab our permanent link adapters. We'll take those out. So let's say that I want to test this with the patch cords. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my channel adapters. I'm going to plug my channel adapters in here. Now in this case, Ah. We're going to grab a couple of patch cords. So I've got a couple of these thin patch cords here. So I'm going to grab one of the patch cords and I'm going to plug it in to this end. I'm going to take the other patch cord, plug it into this end. Now this is a channel test. In this case, this test is where I'm testing the patch cords as part of this link. So what I would do in testing my patch cord connection, I'd come back here to my home screen and I'm going to click on my test right there and I'm gonna say I wanna create a new test. So again, we're gonna choose our CAT6 UUTP. We're gonna to go to our test limit. And for this one, I'm gonna say more. I go to TIA, I'm gonna say CAT6. And here, I'm gonna do my CAT6 channel. Let's do CAT6 channel plus PoE for this test. So I'm gonna be deploying PoE across here, and I wanna make sure that it meets the CAT6 specifications, and it's gonna work okay for handling PoE. And same as before, we've got our outlet configuration set to 568B, not gonna do our AC wire map. I'm gonna hit save, so now it adds that test. With the Versive, I can have up to 10 tests defined per project. So now I can flop back and forth between these quite easily. So I'm gonna say use selected. So now we're gonna run our test. So now what it's doing is it's, it's testing the patch cords in addition to testing that permanent link. So it's including that as part of our test. So now we see that we passed. So we look at our wire map, that's good. 
We look at our performance, we see our length a little bit longer because we included our patch cords. We now have resistance. In fact, not only do we have resistance on here, you see our resistance went up. It was about 1.9. We got a couple of ohms of resistance out of, our pat, out of these patch cords. Now these are thin patch cords. They're using a 28 gauge wire, so much thinner wire. But now not only do we get our resistance here, but we get our pair on balance. This shows us the resistance imbalance between two conductors within the same pair. We do our pair to pair, and this shows us the difference in resistance imbalance between pairs. So for each one of these, this gives us what our limit is. So if we saw that this was out of limit, if we failed one of these tests, we'd wanna go back and make sure that our connectors were punched down properly. We'd want to make sure that our, our connections, that the physical connections were good, the pins were good, because it would tell us that we have an imbalance in resistance there. This can cause issues with PoE. So now, resistance is good. This all passed. That is great. But we only do this test if these patch cords stay in place. So when I'm done with this test, I would want to disconnect from my channel adapters and then move on to the next connection. If I'm doing this test and the way I'm doing it is I'm disconnecting here and moving on to the next test, stop doing that. You need to use your permanent link adapters. That's what those are there for. Few things on the permanent link adapters, those have replaceable tips. If you start failing a bunch of tests, one test after another fails, it's time to put new tips on the end of your permanent link adapters. And you can order those new tips. Or if you have gold support, you can get those tips from Fluke Networks. So it's a good idea to get those replaced. Okay. So let's take a look at a... If we go in and do a modular plug terminated link. Now, what's that? Well, let's come back here. We're going to grab an MPTL connection. So here I have my MPTL connection. So we'll switch in here and let's move our cables around a little bit. Here's our cable. What we see is on one end, I've got my RJ45 jack. And on the other, I've got my RJ45 plug. So this is a case where I've got my patch panel here I've got this that's going to plug into the piece of equipment up in the ceiling. So here's the tendency. We may want to come in and we're going to unplug our patch cords. Let's get those out of the way. And I may come in and say, oh, MPTL, that's pretty cool. I got this adapter that plugs in right there. And then we're going to grab one of our permanent link adapters here. We're going to unplug that. And I'm going to plug that in there. We get our chirp. Ho oh, ho, we're good. Let's go. Let's set this up. So now we're going to hit save. We'll save that to number two. We'll come back out to our home screen right here. And I'm going to come in, or I'm going to click on my tests. I'm going to say new test. And we're going to do, uh, this is CAT6A cable. So we're going to do CAT6A. Then we're going to come into more. We're going to go to TIA. We're going to go to CAT6A. And right here we have CAT6A MPTL. Now the odds are good that if we're doing a MPTL, MPTL connection, then uh, what we're going to see is that we may be running PoE across there. So what I'm going to do, and let me just check something here. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select TIA CAT6A MPTL plus PoE. I'm going to say we're going to store the plot data, pass fail. We're going to save that. So now, 
I'm going to do my MPTL test. I'm going to say use selected and I'm going to say test. Oh, the adapter on the remote tester is not compatible with the current reference or selected limit. Try another adapter. Well, what happened? Well, here's the deal. When we're doing an MPTL test, we have to use a patch cord adapter. Let's switch over here. So in this case, here's this patch cord adapter, which looks a lot like a channel adapter, but it's different. It's different because it uses a laboratory tested RJ45 jack right there. Now, the good news is that jack is replaceable. So we can replace it up to 10 times and we get about 5,000 tests out of a jack. Here's the thing. I have a DSX PC6A patch cord adapter. This is only good for testing CAT6A. If I'm going to do CAT6, I need a PC, or DSX PC6. Uh, if I'm going to do 5E, I need a 5E. Patch cord adapters are only good for the rating that's on there. So this is a CAT6A patch cord adapter. If I want to do a different category of cable, I'd need to have a different adapter. Now the good news is you can purchase a single patch cord adapter. So if you're going to be doing MPTL testing, we can get just one patch cord adapter. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to come over and I'm going to switch that adapter out. Okay, so now I switch that out for the patch cord adapter. So let's come in, we're gonna say, okay, let's hit test again. So now it's running the test. Oh, we passed. Okay, so now what it does is it tells us that this is 100 feet of cable, that our resistance, we can see we, our resistance was within limits. Uh, we can see our return loss, our near and crosstalk, all of that. Our wire map is good. So now we passed and we are able to come in and see that we passed. So we ran an MPTL test. Now this included both the RJ45 at the patch panel end and the RJ45 plug at the far end. We tested that entire link and we tested it properly. Every component was included as part of that link. So this is how we go in and we test an MPTL link. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So we know that is good for CAT6A for our MPTL. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. We're going to save that one. Now the last one that we're going to look at in here are patch cords. Now I know the tendency the tendency is to come in and use your channel adapters to do the test and do a channel test. That is not a valid patch cord test. So let me show you what a valid patch cord test looks like. So to do a valid patch cord test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Get, we'll move my permanent link adapter right here. We're going to grab our other patch cord adapter. So if you need to go in and certify patch cords, you need patch cord adapters. And again, you need to go in, you need to take and get the patch cord adapter for the type of link. Okay. Oh, good. Let's see. So, in this case, somebody brought up an excellent point, and that is that right here I did the plus PoE. Now, plus PoE includes the test, the the resistance tests 
for a pair unbalance in there, but it does not apply a pass fail. If I want to apply the pass fail to this, I'm going to need to do a plus all. So plus POE includes that in the measurements. And one of the things that I highly recommend, and I'll bring it up here toward the end, is there is a document on the Fluke Network's website. And even if you're not using the Fluke equipment, which it would be good to use it, but if you're not using the Fluke Network's equipment, it's still interesting to go out and look at the, the limit lines. They're great for solving issues with insomnia, but also they're really good for coming in and taking a look at what tests are being run as part of each one of these and whether it's pass fail. So great observation. We got an eye next to that. And in fact, before we move on, let's just go ahead. I want to show you because that's the advantage of doing live webinars instead of you just watching some recorded thing in here. Oh, another good question while I'm wiring this up. And that is, I mentioned that the uh, patch cord adapters are good for about 5,000 insertions. Now, the thing with the patch cord adapters is you could replace that jack. So for a set of patch cord adapters, we can get about 55,000 insertions out of those. So let's go ahead and hook this back up. We'll run one more test here. The other one is, I mentioned that we get about 55,000 out of that. What do I get out of a set of tips? Well, the tips, it really depends on how good a care, how, how you care for those. If you're dropping those on the floor, if you're not taking very good care of them, you're not gonna get a lot of tests out. Uh, I typically see we get several thousand tests out of the tips. Um, and here's the thing. The tips, if you buy them retail, it's about 115 or so for a set of tips. And you get a new metal shell for it. You get a new clip. You get a new tip. It's one of those things that if I'm getting up to two or 3,000 tests on a set of tips, I'm probably going to want to make sure that I've got another set on hand. So that way, if th those tips start failing, then I can go in and replace those and keep working. You don't want to get into a situation where the tip gets, even if it got damaged, it could be it just didn't wear out. It could be somebody accidentally dropped it or something got dropped on it. That's something that if that tip gets damaged, you're kind of stuck. You can't do a permanent length test. So it's a good idea to have an extra set of those tips on hand just to make sure that you don't get, you don't, you're not shut down. Okay. Oh, okay. Got another good question there. Tell you what, let me come in here. We're going to set up a little different. We're going to create one more test here. We're going to say new test. We're going to say cat 6 a u u t p. We're going to come in here. We're going to say more. We're going to do TIA, do cat 6 a. We're going to do uh, MPTL. Whoops. Well, there we go. We don't get plus all on that one. All right. So. Yeah. So in that case, with the MPTL, we don't get a plus all on there. So we can go back and look at the standards on that. But in this case, uh, in that, it's, if we do a plus POE, it's going to show us the resistance is informational, but it's not going to be included as part of that standard. Okay. Now, so what usually fails when we have bad tips? Wire map. I uh, Typically what we see is you can't get a good wire map. And once you stop getting a good wire map, then that's an indicator that something's gone haywire with those tips. Now, 
What do I do? Let's see if I have one handy. Yeah, I've got one around here somewhere. I take a barrel connector, plug them into a barrel connector and do a test. And if I can't get a good wire map just using a barrel connector, that's a good indicator that the tips have gone out. Uh, one of the questions is, does the test differentiate between end or mid-span PoE? It doesn't. And actually, the one time we would use AC wire map is if we have mid -span, a mid-span PoE injector. So typically, when we do a wire map, we do a DC wire map. DC will not pass through a mid-span PoE injector. Why? Because it has transformers in it, and DC will not pass through transformers. So in that case, we have to do an AC wire map. But if we do an AC wire map, we don't test resistance and we don't, ver we don't test the shield integrity. So that's why we typically don't do an AC wire map in there. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to switch over to patch cord here. So I'm going to take off my permanent link adapter. We're going to put on our patch cord adapter. Okay. And we are going to grab a patch cord. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I've got a bunch of these thin patch cords. So this patch cord right here is about five meters. Why do I care? You'll see. So I'm going to plug this patch cord in. Now, I use these patch cords all the time, these thin patch cords for doing, doing 10 gig throughput testing for some other applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, this patch cord has CAT6A stamped on it. This patch cord is sold saying it is a CAT6A patch cord. So let's see if it really is. So I'm going to say CAT6A. We're going to come in here. I'm going to say more, and in this case, I'm going to go to patch cords. And I'm going to say I'm going to test a CAT6A patch cord. So here are my ISO test limits. In this case, we're going to come down here, and we are going to go to the TIA 568.2-D patch cord CAT6A 5 meter. That's what that cord is. It's a five meter cord, about 15 feet long. And we're going to run our tests and we are going to hit save. We're gonna select that patch cord test. Now, I don't wanna use up the time today to show you the error message that we would get, but if I put channel adapters on here and tried to do a patch cord test, the test would fail. The analyzer is smart enough to know what adapters you have on each end. It's going to go, dude, you're using the wrong adapters. You need to use the right ones. So I'm going to hit test. So now we're testing that patch cord. Oh, generating diagnostics. We hate to see that. We hate to hear that. Uh -uh. It's a horrible noise when we're testing things. It says fail says, what did we fail on? We failed on both near-end crosstalk and we failed on return loss. You notice that there's, we don't run as many tests on the patch cord as we do on a permanent link or a channel. So we're looking at resistance. We're looking at near-end crosstalk. We're looking at return loss and length. So if I come up here to diagnostic, and I'll tell you, when you start going and doing testing, diagnostic is not something you want to see show up. So we go to diagnostic and we failed, actually we failed both uh, near end cross talk and return loss. So we're gonna go to diagnostic, we're gonna go to our HDTDX, our high definition time domain cross talk. I wanna see what failed. Ugh. So in this case, not only did our ends fail, but our cable failed as well. So we can see these lines show us how much crosstalk we have. So what we're seeing is, and we're looking for a value in our connectors there, 
of less than 35 or actually less than 30 percent right there and we're exceeding that we're even exceeding it for the cable and so what we're finding is that both our connectors and our cable have way more crosstalk than we're looking for out of a cat 6a patch cord so it's marked cat 6a it's sold as cat 6a that does not pass cat 6a so we're going to go back and we're going to say fix later well we really can't fix it but we'll go ahead and hit save so now let's see how i can do building a patch cord so what I've, what I've got back here is I've got about a 60 foot, so about tw just over 20 meter patch cord that I built using toolless connectors. And you know, a little controversy there when I talk to people about toolless connectors, because we, we lay everything down and then we crimp it down with a pair of channel locks. So let's see how this works. So I'm gonna come in and pull that patch cord out. We're going to come in here. We're going to plug this in. So I'm using Cat 6A cable. Now, what I'm going to want to do is this cable's longer when we're doing our patch cord test. We want to take that into consideration. So I'm going to say add a new test. And we're going to do Cat 6A. We're going to do more. We're going to do patch cords. We're going to do 6A. We're going to zoom on down here. We're going to find greater than 20 meters. And I'll hit save. I'll say use selected. We'll do a test. Let's see how I can do building a Cat 6A patch cord. Passed. Woohoo! All right. So now we see that I passed. I've got good near end crosstalk on there. Now I could come in and here we can save that. I could come back to my home screen and I could run a diagnostic test. I could run a diagnostic test to say, what does this cable look like? What does this cable look like compared to that 6A cable that I bought. So what this will do is this will run my test, but it forces the diagnostics to be run. So now I can look at my HDTDX. And so look at the difference in crosstalk across the cable versus what we see with that patch cord. And here we see our crosstalk at each end. Now we are looking for a value, if we're less than 50 feet of cable, we're looking for a value of uh, around third, not more than 30%. If we're above 50 feet, we're looking for a value less than 35%. So we're right in there for what we're looking for, for our values here, big difference in that. But this is where the HDTDX and HDTDR tell us where the problem is. And if you do a channel test, we do not see what that crosstalk is at those jacks because we don't measure at those plugs at each end. So we can, uh, let's do one more test here. And that, well, we're coming up on 10 minutes. I just want to take a look. Um, so these are the differences that we see between doing each one of these different types of tests is with the permanent link. That is where the patch cords are not going to be left in place. We use our permanent link adapters. We do not move patch cords from jack to jack to jack and do our testing. If we're including the patch cords, then we do a channel test. We use that channel test to make sure that the patch cords and the infrastructure cabling as well as the jacks and patch panels are all working well. If we have a connection where we have an RJ45 plug on one end and a jack and a patch panel on the other, that's where we use our modular plug terminated link. But if we're gonna do an MPTL test, we need to make sure that we have the correct patch cord adapter for that cable. So if you only have a CAT6 and you know, I'm just gonna do a CAT6 test, six test, but it's 6A cable, you did not certify it to 6A. 
So make sure you've got all the right test components in there. And lastly, if you have to certify patch cords, you have to have patch cord adapters. If you don't need to certify the patch cord, all you're doing is a wire map, then we can do that. We can come in, we can run tests where we do, you know, we could say, hey, I'm going to run a single test and just run a wire map. Boom, right there. You do a wire map. Really, if you're doing a patch cord test with channel adapters, you're running it as a channel, channel test, that's really all you're doing. We could look at resistance. We could see what does our resistance look like on that. So we can run some of those tests. So you need to decide what is it that um, you're testing. Are you testing, are you certifying the patch cord? If you certifying the patch cord, use patch cord adapters. So I hope that I, one, I very much appreciate everybody joining on today. I know your time is valuable. Um, I appreciate you joining on. I hope you found the webcast useful, informative. Uh, we'll be doing more of these and I'll let you know when those come up. I want to make sure that you have the information necessary to get out there and be successful in testing cabling. And if you, this is a great way to learn some more things. Also, please check out the CCTT training website. We're doing classes every month. We'd love to get you certified. That's what we do. And uh, you take a test at the end of it. And the neat thing with that is if you pass the test, you get seven Bixi credits. So each one of those two days is good for Bixi credits. So if that's something you need to get, then uh, please check those out. And we'll include some information in the follow-up email. And in addition, if um, we'll be sending out, I'll send out a link. Like I said, this has been recorded. I'll send out a link tomorrow. It'll come out in about 24 hours from now. You'll get a link with that. Okay? So, that's about it. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you in a future session.